questions. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Debbie and I'm on the creative design team at Sizzix and we're ready to switch it up today. Showing you the showcasing also everything you need to know about the switch machine, our new machine that cuts and embosses just like the majority of our other machines and cuts and embosses everything beautifully. We're gonna, I'm gonna walk you through the technology of that as well as show you a few projects. So I would love to hear if you're gonna be making along with us or if you will be um, just kind of taking notes and gonna make it in the future. So if you wanna hear a little bit about me as everybody's still coming in, um, I've been in the art and uh, creative industry for over pretty much most of my, my life after college. I've um, been in the craft industry for uh, 21 years and with Sizzix for 20 years. So I've been with Sizzix since it was born or she, he, he or she was born. <laughs> um, so I've seen all the changes and all the fun that's come about and every year and every month and every day gets better and better. It's like uh, coming to work and playing with all your friends with all beautiful things around you. So. Um, being able to do all of this every day, it's a dream come true. Everything, everybody in my family is in the medical field and none of that's pretty. So this is exactly where I need, I need to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and if they could do the overhead camera, we're gonna get you started. I'll walk through the technology of the machine. Okay, so the big shot switch machine, you are gonna absolutely love it. So just by looking at it, I was kind of glancing at it the other day again, and I thought, you know, this needs to be like in a fashion show. It's a beautiful elegance, got the chrome little embellishments. I mean, the little detail on it is, is absolutely gorgeous. It's sleek, it's stylish. I mean, it looks beautiful in your studio or on your workplace. It's, I, I love everything about it. It's electronic, as you know. All the features are perfectly detailed. It comes with the machine, obviously. Let me just show you a few bits and pieces about the machine itself. Um, it has this, the door that comes down, it just lightly just falls in its place. You have a little storage spot here. It's perfect for any of your dyes that you use a lot of. I use a lot of hearts, I use a lot of flowers and leaves. If I don't keep them with the original set, then I just put them in here. My die pick, my tweezers, all the little things you might need that you use regularly, you can put in there or your snacks. So that just closes right in place. The back latch in the back, you don't, um, it it's, knows itself to go through once the machine is on and it's feeding your um, sandwich through. We call this a sandwich. So there's nothing you need to do or open and close it. It does it on its own. The good thing about it is it keeps it shut in the back so no dust or anything will go in there. So I'm gonna close this up a little bit just so you can see the, um, rest, of the rest of the pieces. So you get the platform and you get the thin die ad adapter platform and that's the A and it shows you everything you need to do in all of the platforms. So if you're doing any of our thin lids, any of our embossing folders that needs a little more space underneath it to um, enable it to hit the rollers in the machine, that's why you need to build everything on your, your sandwich on top of this. So the reason we say sandwich is because this is like the bread. If I'm going to be doing any kind of embossing, it'll show me exactly what I need to do on here. So it'll show you the embossing folder and how you build it. Here's the platform and this image here and the cutting pad and then your embossing folder with your material, whether it's a thin foil or a paper inside of that and another cutting pad on top of that. You run it through the machine and it embosses beautifully. If you're doing a 3D embossing folder, it shows you right here what you need to do. The platform, the 3D or multi-level platform with the material inside, close it up and you only need one cutting pad because this material on the embossing folder, and that's one that you get in your um, starter kit, is so thick that all you need is that as the underneath as your sandwich, and this is the other one on top. So it shows you right on there. You also will get with your machine um, detailed pamphlet. You always wanna have that on hand um, just because it gives more specific, but you don't wanna have to pull that out every time you're using the machine. All the details are right here and you have to use this if you're doing any kind of um, thin die or embossing folders. So if you're doing any thin dies, you're gonna put this on top of that. And this will show you exactly here what you need to do. Flat, if you're gonna be doing a framelit, and a framelit is just, and I'll show you, with, it's also part of your starter kit. It's just an, literally a frame. You can just look right through it. There's no detail. But if you can see here, there's a little more detail on a thinlet. There's more detail around inside of the blade. So a framelit is just, a, just the ring or a square or whatever just the blade. This has multiple blades inside and then the intricate has a lot, a lot of blades inside. So it'll show you exactly how you need to um, create your sandwich. The platform, which is this, the thin die adapter, which is the A, the green, one cutting pad, 
for a framelit, you're going to put the die with the blade against the good side of your paper and then another cutting pad on top. Good rule of thumb just to have thumb to have the blade against the good side of the paper, especially if you're going to be doing a word and your paper is either textured or patterned. You want to make sure your word that you're cutting is going to be legible instead of backwards. And um, if you do it wrong the first time, you'll, you won't do it again because you'll remember, darn it. <laughs> and then for something that's um, a little more intricate, you're going to do it with the um, blade against the paper. Sorry, blade up against the paper, run it through, and then have the blade, I'm sorry, blade up against the cutting pad, paper against the blade, cutting pad, and then run it through. Something very intricate, um, you would use the precision base plate, and that's another accessory that's not included in the machine. And not there's a lot of pressure in this machine, so it's not completely necessary for certain intricate dies. You will also get two cutting pads. These are our clear acrylic cutting pads. They're nine inches. The machine has a nine inch opening. So imagine all the area you have to here to create whatever you're doing. So if you want to spell out somebody's name or a word, instead of doing each letter one at a time, you can lay them all out in, and spell out the whole name. Jennifer, that's a long name. You have all this area here to do it. You could cut some hearts some butterflies some leaves and flowers all at the same time because you have this big workspace. Okay. Um, the reason we do, yeah, if you'll notice, I don't know if you'll be able to see on camera, but the cutting pad has, has a Sizzix name here, and it also has a beveled edge just on the side. So the part that where Sizzix is legible, not backwards, where it's legible, that's beveled in, and that makes the machine grip it and pull it through easier. This side is flat. It doesn't bevel down. So on both the ends, you have a beveled side on one side. You want to make sure that that's the part that's feeding into the machine, not this way. With the beveled edge kind of angled down, Sizzix word is legible, Sizzix goes first into the machine. So that's how you want to sandwich all of your pieces. So the fun part also included in your machine is nothing's better than getting a new toy and you're able to go home and play with it right away. Instead of getting the machine, going home and saying, oh shoot, I have to get this. I got to run back to the store and get it. I got to get this. Everything's included in the starter kit that you need, except for your paper and you know, we all have paper. So you have so this is what I was talking about, a framelit. See how it's a literal frame. You can just see right through it. This is an intricate die. You can see the detail on this die here. It has all these detailed blades and it'll cut beautifully. And with this machine, there's so much pressure that majority of the time it does cut in one pass. So that's one of your intricate dies that comes with your machine. You're also going to get hexagons. So you have five hexagons, all these individual shapes that graduate inside, so there's nesting. So you can cut one and you will get a perfect large hexagon. If you lay this one inside of it and run them both at the same time, which you can do, that'll run through and it'll give you a ring of a hexagon with a board. It'll actually be an actual, just the, the negative space of the hexagon, it'll be the border of it. Or you can just layer it up on top of each other and I can show you one of the projects we're going to be doing today. That's the same. Um, I'll show you that technique and then some other techniques using that as well. You will also be getting 17 of these flowers, leaves, and a few butterflies. So look at all this that you can create. You have flower centers. These can also be used as centers. You have the foliage with the blade. So this blade here won't cut. It'll score it. So you can pinch it and give it a little more, the vein of the leaf, pinch it and it'll uh, crease it down the center easily. This is another um, flower center and I'll show you how that one works. It's part of the project too. And all of these cut and emboss, or sorry, cut and just do a little emboss edge on certain ones, but the detail is beautiful. And with the sculpting um, kit, paper sculpting kit that I'm gonna be showing you, that also can sculpt your flowers and give them a little more um, character. Another beautiful piece that you get included is the heart 3D embossing folder. So if you're familiar with our embossing folders, our original texture impressions, it gives a beautiful embossed image, no doubt, perfect, beautiful inking, everything. It's just really clean embossing. But the concept of the 3D embossing is unbelievable. It's no matter what you're embossing, whether it's a thin foil or a thin metal or leather or velvet, paper, anything, the detail is amazing. So when I, you'll be wild when you see it coming through. So this is what's included. And it's just like all of our other ones, just a lot, a lot heavier material, but this is the positive and this is the negative. You need something to push into your material 
and you run it through the machine and these exact hearts will match up to the one on the other side and it'll give a beautiful embossed image. So that's gonna be part of the project as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you, if you wanna see up close, the three projects we're gonna be doing today. So this one is using the um, heart embossing folder and then one of the few of the flowers, just kind of sculpted a little bit with the flower center. Another one is the hexagon. This is using the larger hexagon and then another hexagon and we embossed that one and then just embellished it around the edges with um, any flowers that you choose. I mean, how beautiful would this be for an invitation or just a little card hanging off of a gift? Some of the detail in these cards would make it a gift itself. <laughs> and then this one is using the intricate die and some of the foliage and the butterflies. And that just makes a beautiful, um, beautiful project. And then at the end, I'll show you a few other samples, some ideas to get you started and excited. So let me go ahead and get everything here so we can start. I'm gonna start with the intricate card using the intricate die and that's this one here. Okay. So the dies that I need obviously are the intricate and some of the flowers. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the machine and I, it's the power button, it's a universal shape image symbol for power. Turn that on and you can see it has a little light glow. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. So let's just let it fall as it may. And I think I will bring this forward just so you can see the machine better when it comes out the back. Okay. I have, my car, I have my card and certain pieces already ready to go, but I would just want to show you. So the beveled edge here is the part that I was saying needs to go through the machine first, but it has to be legible. This is not the right way because this one's backwards. So as long as it's on your right side and it's not upside down, then you know that's the direction you need to have the cutting pad for it to feed through. Okay, so first I'm going to do the intricate part. So for the intricate part, I use a, um, our adhesive sheet. Now our adhesive sheet is a double-sided adhesive sheet that I lay on top of the paper. So, and I lay it on the wrong side of the paper. And when it goes through the machine, it'll already be a sticker. It'll be cut and ready to go instead of having to use any fussing it with any kind of wet glue. Okay. So since this is intricate, and if you remember on the platform, it said have the intricate, have the die going up. Because whatever the pressure is better on the machine if the die hits the roller, not first because it's going to hit the paper first. But if I went like this, it doesn't hit hits the cutting pad, and then so you want the blade. Sorry, you want the blade to be hitting the um, roller and the paper sooner than it hits the other part. If that makes sense. So the blade up when you're doing something intricate. So when I run it through the machine, you're gonna, it's gonna hit the sensor and the sensor is gonna let it know, okay, I'm hungry, ready to eat. <laughs> and it'll go right through. And once I know it's hit the back sensor, that's when I take it out. I don't take it out of the back when it's still going. I could tell it had already cut beautifully. Now, if it was partially out, but I could still see the cutting area exposed here, and I thought, whoa, let me give it another pass, I would hit the switch button, and that's the switch. So the switch would hit it this way, and it'll run it through again. And I'll show that to you in a second. So look how beautiful that is. So that's a beautiful detail on that. Now, with all these pieces, I'm gonna go ahead and use my dye brush and how easily they all fall out. I don't wanna make a mess on camera, so let me do it off to the side. Okay, so this is beautiful. If it was a card ready to go, if you wanna just trim around it, but I wanna show you the technique of using the framelit that comes with it, okay? So we're going to do the same one. I'm going to run it through. I could go ahead and do it like this and even it up, but I wanted you to see how you are able to do it two at a time. So this is one. Get all these little pieces out. 
And then I'll use the switch button so you can see how wonderful it is that it just comes back right at you. I try not to talk when the machine's on just because, just in case you can't hear me. <laughs> Get all these little pieces out. So the good thing about our, our um, thinlets is we have these poke holes and it, just in case the brush doesn't get all the pieces, the die pick gets them out perfectly. And I got them on. Okay, so I'm gonna put it down there like that. And then I'm gonna use our maker's tape. This is perfect to hold the die in place if you wanna make sure it stays put. Make sure the word Sizzix is legible and correct. This one I'm gonna go up, blade up, I'm sorry, blade down, just so you can see that it's okay for something intricate, especially because I want you to see how the switch button works. While it's still exposed, I'm gonna hit switch. But since I know it didn't hit this area, I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna run it through just one time. So this way it's gonna cut this intricate piece out and the border. So that way I know that it's gonna be one individual piece and it's beautiful if you want to cut it like this and lay it on top of a solid card. But see how with the frame, it cut it out all in one piece. So with the framelit and the intricate die in the center, you can run it through all at the same time. Okay. Now I need to use the framelit just to cut the back side. So this piece here this cherry blossom color in the backside, that's when I will use this all by itself. Clean off my mess here. This is a framelit, it's gonna go blade down. So the good thing about, not the good thing, one of the great things about framelits is since you can see right through them, if you're going to be die cutting a poem, especially for something like this, this long narrow rectangle, a poem or somebody's name that's already, or something already in print, you're able to see right through it exactly where you want to position the frame. So that's a, that's a perfect little tip. So you go ahead and turn this this way. And you want to have your dies going at an angle just so it gives even pressure as it's going down. And that way the machine and the blade won't hit the roller at the same time it hits at a straight edge. And I know I don't need to do another pass and hit the switch because I know for sure it cut through. So since, like I said, this is a um, adhesive back, I'm gonna pull the backing off and voila, it's already a sticker. And you can go ahead and position that down. So the backing to this and the framelit, it matches up perfectly so you know the sizing is right. So I'm going to set that aside since I will use that when I'm assembling the card. Okay, now I'm going to do the flowers and all the parts and pieces that you need to have to embellish your beautiful card. And since these pieces are all small, these dies are so small, I'm able to go ahead and cut them all at the same time. So I'm going to do this one. Make sure the good side of the blade is, uh, the good side of the blade, the uh, paper is going against the blade. I need this amber color for the flowers. Okay. 
and then I'm going to do this little piece here. And the butterflies. And then I need one of the flower centers. So that's the beauty of this area here, this workspace. You're able to run it all through kind of all at the same time since you have this big area to work with. Okay, so I know that the cutting pad has the word Sizzix on that side. Oops. Lay that back down, make sure it's protruding just a little bit. So those are all angled on there. And the sticky back of these dies kind of more sticking to the cutting pan. Reposition these. Civics and civics. Once you hear it go through, it's ready to go. Now, the reason I hit switch to switch it back is because I noticed that it was kind of at an angle and I didn't want it to jam. So I'm just that one cutting pad was out just a little bit. So now I can go ahead and run it back through. As long as you're seeing it's still exposed, you can hit the switch. One of those petals got trimmed off a little bit. Okay, I've got all these pieces. Now I can start assembling it. I want to show you how to put together that cute little um, flower center. So this flower center, it you can see the it cuts here but there's no blade at the edges of it. So it's just cutting the center. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and fold it in half. And then with your tweezers and a little bit of glue, put a little bit of glue here on the side, on the border. And with your tweezers, you're gonna start rolling it. And put a little bit of glue of our express glue on the end to close it up and I'll hold it just for a second so it'll um, dry. Express glue dries pretty quick, hence the name express. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and hold that there just to make sure it dries and then I'll start manipulating it. So let me just put it off to the side there, take all these little pieces out. Butterfly. Let me trim this one down a little bit since it got the edges got cut. Okay, so with the paper sculpting kit, while the while that little flower center is drying, I'm going to show you how that works. So our paper sculpting kit comes with these different styluses, and I'm just going to go ahead and with the ball that I choose, there's different sizes. I'm going to just kind of manipulate these petals to bring them to life and add a little more character to them. So they're rounded there and then I'm gonna bring them up a little bit like that. I learned that trick from my friend Alexis. She knows a little bit about everything. Okay, bring that one there. Okay, and with the express glue, I'm gonna add a little dab here. I mean, can you imagine how pretty this would be with the different colors for the season? So if it's Thanksgiving, you could do it all in fall colors, which is my favorite time of year. But springtime, some pastel colors would be so pretty. One more in the center. 
that creates that flower. And then this is the other flower center. I'm just going to do this one just a little bit. Put that one in the middle. Oops. See how it's coming to life? Hold that down just for a second. I like to curl up these little pieces here. So you can see how the detail in that one. And then this is that final piece here. So what I like to do is I like to take my die pick and just kind of, there's, there's little, since these are like individual little loops in that, in this one, since I folded this and since I folded this die in half after I cut it, there's a, it's like a strip, but it, they're individual little loops. So I like to open up the loops and kind of go around. And I'll show you a couple things we did um, in some of the other projects, or you can just kind of bend it up around yourself. So see how that kind of comes to life. And I'm going to put that one in the center just to finish off this flower. Whoops. And let that dry. And then I'm just going to go ahead and start assembling this card. So with my double-sided tape runner, now I could have also done an adhesive sheet on the back of this if I wanted, or you can use any kind of wet glue. So if you guys are making along, we would love to hear about it, how you're, how you're coming along, or if I'm going too fast, or if you have any questions as well. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to the left side of my card. I will put this flower that I just assembled. here. Put that down. And then I'm just going to tuck these little, well, this French, this French navy color is so pretty. Um, let me just do a little bit of sculpting on these. They don't need much. Add a little bit of glue. I want it to drip on the mat or on the switch machine <laughs> would not be a good thing. That one there. I'm gonna round off these here. These little stylus are so the perfect size to fit inside these little buds. A little dab of express glue. And then for the butterflies, I want them to come to life. So I'm just going to do their wings just a little bit and then bring them the body down to the center. So if you can see how that works. They kind of take flight on the card. <laughs> more. And there you have it. How pretty is that? You could add more butterflies coming up and around down here, all over the card. I love the tone on tone. So if you did some more off to the ivory onto the ivory, that'd be so pretty. So that's that one. I hope you enjoyed that. If you made along, let me know how much fun you had doing it. And then let me go on to the next one. Get my little, let's out of the way here. I'm going to lose these flowers since we'll be using them again. Okay. Well, how about we do the hexagon next? If you guys have any questions, put them in the chat and somebody will come get me to answer them or they know everything too over there. So I'm sure they'll be able to answer them just as good as I could. Okay, so we're gonna do the hexagon next. And that's this one here, grab my goods. And the hexagon is using obviously the hexagon, but there's also a folding technique that I want to show you to get my little pieces out so I can have those ready to go. 
So as you can see, it's a hexagon. If I went ahead and just laid the blade right there on top of that, ran it through the machine, I'd have two perfectly beautiful shaped hexagons, but I want it to fold without gluing or anything. So to save my fold, I'm going to take the hexagon, I'm using the larger one, and then for the embossed heart in the center, I will be using the, um, the next size up, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, and if you can see, on the framelit, the blade, it's not, a, it's not a blade where it's gonna cut you if you're just going like this. Um, the blade is raised, and it's on the inside, not on the outside of the um, framelit, it's on the inside. This is also a framelit, just like that rectangle one. It's just no blades are in here. So this is, the blade is on the outside. Sorry, the blade is on the inside. It's closer to the open area. And to save my fold, if I went like this, I would, like I said, I would have two perfectly cut hexagons, but I wanna save my fold. So I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit so the blade is visible. Not the outside of the framelit, the actual blade that's closest to the center. As long as the blade is visible, then you're able to cut. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I just wanna make sure that does not move. So I'm gonna use my maker's tape again. This is just a low tech, um, I'm sorry, low tech, <laughs> low, yeah, is that the right? Low tack, sorry, <laughs> the word was not coming to you. Low tack, um, similar to a washi tape. Okay, there's one on the bottom and then I need a cutting, another cutting pad on top. This one's got a little bit of flowers in there. So let me move this just off to the side. Like I had said, you want the blade to be closest to the roller. That way you get more pressure and it won't, not that it ruins your machine, it just won't jump and it doesn't bother the blade really either, but it just makes it feed it and more even pressure going through. So the machine has sensors on the front and the back. Once you know it hit the back sensor, then you can take it. You do not want to pull it out while it's still, obviously while it's still going, or if you think it took it, you want to make sure it, the back sensor is already past what it was doing. And so since this is a low tack tape, it won't ruin my paper. I just have to peel it off. Okay, so there's the perfect fold. Hexagon ready to go. Now I'm going to cut use the other hexagon size. And at the same time, I'm going to be cutting all the flowers that I need. So I have all my pieces. This is going to be the hexagon. Obviously, it is the hexagon. This is going to be the emboss one that I'll emboss next because I can't emboss and cut at the same time because the technology is different. Remember, you only need one cutting pad for that. Okay, I have some flowers that I've already pre-cut just to save a little bit of time. I won't do all of them. And I need the leaves. This is using some of our muted colored cardstock and as well as our um, original set of colors. You always want to make sure the blade is against the good side of the paper. That's the part that's going to be showing the uh, recipients what they're getting. Let's see, and I have the majority of these flowers already cut, so let me do. I 
this today, but it should be all of them. Let's see, one more. Okay. Anybody, um, anybody from Canada or anybody? Well, I guess it's pretty many, just US and Canada, correct? So love hearing where everybody's coming from. Okay, make sure I run it through the machine. Blade is going at an angle. All pieces are accounted for. And I'm going to run it through. So once you see it taking it, you can just let go, kind of clean up your area, grab your glues, whatever you need to do. And when it stops, you know you're all set. I've got that flower. I love that fat cookie flower. I've got my embossing, my piece that I'm going to emboss next. Daisy. And they just pop out. And you know, some of these are so pretty, you can just cut it out and use it as a stencil also. Let us know if I'm going too fast or hope you can hear me okay. I'm sure they would have come to get me if there was an issue. <laughs> you see how some of the dyes, if they do get stuck inside, you've got the little poke holes, doesn't damage the paper, just pops right out. Okay, so I need to emboss this little hexagon that I've um, already die cut. So instead of die cutting a full sheet, I mean, sorry, instead of embossing a full sheet of paper and then running it through to emboss it, I mean, to cut, so if I, if I emboss this full sheet and then ran it through another time to cut the hexagon out, the embossing would still be visible, but not nearly as strong as you would like it to be. So that's why we recommend that you do the shape first and then the embossing. So what I'm going to do next is this is a um, double sided it has a adhesive sheet on the back, but so I'm not going to spritz that but to soften the fibers when you're doing any of our um, 3D embossing or multi level embossing, you're going to want to spritz it with water. Do it away from the machine and that will soften the fibers of your um, paper as it goes. Right, so it won't tear the machine, the paper fibers are softened, they're damp. So the likely, uh, likelihood of your embossing tearing is uh, slim. So I'm gonna go ahead, make sure the positive is on the bottom. That's this narrower piece. It's gonna push up into here to match up to this part and create the, um, the embossed image. So remember, you do not need two cutting pads. You do not need the adapter, uh, the three, sorry, the thinlet adapter pad when you're doing embossing, it shows you right here. You have your platform, your folder with the material inside, and then the cutting pad on top. Make sure the Sizzix is visible here on the cutting pad, and I'm gonna run it through. I will also use the switch button just so I can know it has a good um, even impression. I know it will be because this machine has a lot of pressure, but just to give you an idea how you want to hit the switch button for it to come back. Okay. <clears throat> and you want to make sure that you can still see the embossing folder exposed before you hit the switch. So with the um, extra layer of my adhesive sheet on the back side, uh, that added a little extra emboss, a little more pressure too. So look at the beauty of that. Can you see the detail? I absolutely love that. Okay, so we've got the flowers cut, we've got my hexagon cut, and we've got this all ready. So I'm gonna go ahead, peel off this backing, So this is already a sticker. I could have done it without the adhesive backing. It just makes it easier. I could have used a, um, a tape roller or a wet glue. 
I'm just going to position that on there. Matches up beautifully. Now, whether you want the fold to be at the top or on the side, it's up to you. If you have it on the top, so let me just go ahead and match this up. So what we did is we sculpted the flowers just like I had done before. Sculpt them up a little bit on this one. And then we have my little yellow flower here. And you can do any kind of inking if you want on any of those. I have this piece already done with the center on there. Go ahead and have my glue to that so that can be drying while I'm assembling the rest of it. Have a little flower center, a little another flower on top of that with another flower center on top of that. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna add this little flower center. And I'm gonna take one of my little pre-cut flower centers here. Peel off the adhesive backing. Put that in the center there. Adds a little bit of life. If you guys are having any holidays coming up, you could add that to a little decor in your. Um, these could be cute little cake toppers. You could add them to the place cards if you're having everybody over for. Easter or any of the holidays you're celebrating. These just add a little fun and they'll be, all be so amazed and impressed that you made it. And this one I'm going to add another flower center. This one. Now any technologies that, that Sizzix makes can be used on the flux, on the big shot um, switch plus anything that Sizzix makes, any of the dies, any of the embossing folders, not our Ellison Surecut dies because those are, um, those have a steel rule. Well, our bigs are steel rule, but the Surecut dies are the ones that have the wood base and there's, they're, they won't go through the machine. So your machine definitely will not pick that up as a, um, a die that it would want to take through. So it won't go through at all. So the big dies, which are our steel rule blade, those will cut beautifully. Multiple um, layers of material go through that as well. I didn't need any glue on that because I have the piece of backing. I always surprise myself when I forget that I do that. <laughs> okay. Add another flower center to this one. So the big dies cut multiple materials, all sorts of thick um, materials, eight layers of fabric. The thinlets will cut one layer of fabric, but you might have to do a, a couple passes just because of the threads that go through. So um, that's just kind of fun, fun to know. Let me just add a little jazz to these. And I will start assembling it. I have the fold on the top. Add a little center to this one flower. I mean, you can make up your own little scene. It's like your your own individual personal florist creating an arrangement with these flowers, whether you're doing all greenery, that's pretty too. If you do all foliage, that would be a really pretty um, idea for a project. So however you want to um, do this, you could have it fully, you could do it without the embossing. I mean, the possibilities are endless and you are the designer.
It's kind of nice to overlap them. It gives a little, a little bit of more, little bit of dimension. Glue on there. And then I've got my foliage to add. Let me put this one more flower on there. So it's up to you the colors that you want to use, obviously, but this just shows you how versatile it is and how nice they all flow together. Okay, and then for the greenery, I'm going to put this thin one on first. These will look really pretty if you have a metallic paper um, and you use it for, you use that for um, the holidays, just a little spritz of glitz. Nice little spray if you did some of these in the, any of the opulent tones that we have of our cardstock. That underneath. And the beauty about these cards and our flowers is the flowers don't die and the cards will last forever and they will absolutely love it. So there you have it. There's the second one. I love the colors all together. Okay, there's that one. And then the last one, which is pretty simple, is the um, using a folding tech, sorry, not a folding technique, using the embossing folder, but using it in a way that um, it adheres them all together. So I'm gonna show you that technique. So what I'm gonna do first is, what I did is I had cut previously, as you can see, these are all embossed. I didn't emboss each piece one at a time. I'm gonna show you the trick. So I put embossing, sorry, I put adhesive sheets on the back of each color. And I'm gonna go ahead and lay this one down. This is the hibiscus color. Whatever size panel you want for your card. So I'm gonna lay that one down there. And the next one, I'm gonna tear it. So it has the adhesive backing, but that's okay. I'm gonna tear it. The reason I'm tearing it towards me is if I teared it, tore, teared it. <laughs> if I tore it this way, um, you wouldn't see the lighter colored core on the inside. So I'm gonna tear it this way. So you can see the difference in the shading. Just kind of however you'd like it to go. Okay. Now I'm going to peel the backing off of this one and I'm going to lay it on top of that. Trim it. And then lastly is this one. So I'm going to go ahead and tear that one. So that's our hibiscus. In case you want to know, this is our primrose and this is our ballet slipper cardstock. It looks so pretty all together. Since I cut that one, I trimmed that one shorter. I'm going to trim off the white because I don't need that white excess showing. So that's how it's ready to go. I mean, this looks great by itself, but since this is paper and there's no adhesive on the back, I'm going to um, mist both sides because it's gonna be going through the machine with the embossing folder. So I'm gonna lay it in there like that. Positive will go underneath and poke it up into the negative. Okay, just like before. One cutting pad. Make sure that the word Sizzix is legible and on the right side. And I'm gonna run it through. And I'm going to hit the reverse button while it's still exposed. Now just say I want to go through one more time. Since it stopped and I pulled it out, I'm going to go through one more time.
So I know it has a nice green. How pretty is that? I love it, love, love that. Okay, so that's all embossed and ready. What I'm gonna do next is all I need to do is use either my double-sided adhesive or express glue. And since this is damp, I think I will use my express glue. The double-sided the tape runner might not adhere very easily, it might slide off since this is still damp. Make sure my fold is on the left. Nothing's worse than when you assemble a card and you realize, darn it, it's upside down. Hold that down. And then the last part is I am going to cut the flowers that we need to embellish this card with. So since I'm going to be using these thinlets, I need my thin dye adapter. I need my cutting pad, the word Sizzix, legible and up. And I need some white cardstock that I know I have here. Okay, so I just need these two little flowers. I already have my flower centers, but just to be sure, I'm gonna cut them again. I actually need two, so I'm gonna cut two. <laughs> You can cut through two pieces of cardstock, but that is pretty much your limit, my friends. So one cutting pad on the bottom. I just need that smaller one, so it's okay that the larger one is gonna be partially cut. A cutting pad on top. And remember, you need to have the word Sizzix visible. Some reason that big one likes to move around. So I've got my two little centers here. So I cut them out perfectly. I've got this one. I'm trim that just because it slid just a little bit around off those edges. Assemble this. My Hold that down, thin these up just a little bit. And then for my little flower centers here, I'm going to sculpt them. Just a little bit and I'll adhere them to each other. Now I wouldn't do 3D, I mean, I wouldn't do adhesive sheets on these little things because the only part that you need to have sticky is the center. You don't want the little frilly parts to be sticky because then it would defeat the purpose of the frilliness of it. <laughs> That'll work. Go ahead and adhere that down. Now I could have used our foam tape just to give it a little dimension, but this is, and then you could print a sentiment. 
You could put their name on the base part here. You could trim it so the border would be even. You could add some foliage. The possibilities are endless and you get to decide. That's the best part. And there you have it. There's that one. And then our intricate die project and our a hexagon one. Let me show you some really quickly some other projects that we've created. Just so got a couple minutes, so that's perfect timing. Oh, but let me show you one more feature that I forgot to share with you that I love about this machine. I mean, look how portable it is. It has these integrated handles here on the side that make it easier to carry. It's about 18 pounds, but that'll be your workout. I love it. It's sleek and it's fabulous. So here's a couple of projects that Alexis and I have created. Um, this one is using the hexagon. She cut it out with another one in the middle um, to make the border, embellished it, and then she did the same technique with the solid piece on the side and em embossed it. How pretty is that with the sentiment? Popped up some of the flowers, added some of our sequins and beads. Beautiful. If you're in a book club, this is a fun little gift to give all your friends. If it's a certain occasion, you can embellish it with their initials. This is a great little gift that you can give to everybody if you're in a book club or just for yourself. Here's another one just using the ringlet of the frame. Sorry, the hexagon, <laughs> hexagon framelit and some of the flowers. And one embellishment sentiment on top. I love the detail on that one. This is a technique that I love to do. It's using the um, intricate die, but I didn't use the border. I just kept in the center of this, less, this um, thistle color paper, but I matched up the holes, ran it through again, matched up the holes, ran it through again. So it looks like one continuous card front and this embellished it with the same flowers. All of these were done on the switch machine with your starter kit. This was another fun project. One of the hex, one of the, um, Intricate dies is popped up, and then the other one is just flat. Same identical ones, embellished with some flowers, and she did this the other day, and it's absolutely beautiful. And lastly, I thought this would be a pretty little napkin ring. I just took the intricate die, and then I trimmed around, trimmed it around. So I cut it this way, and just kept without the frame part, and then with the um, sculpting tool and one of the styluses, I kind of rounded it up a little bit. So if you did something like this for a shower invitation, you could do the same exact idea for the actual party using the flowers, using the same colors, and it all ties in perfectly. So that is it. If you would like to add me to your front facing camera, I will thank everybody for joining us. And that is it. I hope you guys had a great time. I enjoyed every single bit of it. If you have any questions, please pop them in the uh, chat and we would love to answer them anytime you like. And we look forward to seeing you again at the next one. Have a great day.